Welcome back everyone to Missions 101 where today we are going to run the first two missions in the eighth set of missions here in the Elder Slades. Let's speak with Horn to find out what the first mission is. It appears that each of our two quest givers has two today, so let's begin with the Nests of Ice. My scouts have come back from Stormwall. They have found the ruins overrun by cold worms and their nests. Had my scouts more time, they would have destroyed some of the nests. We must return to properly rid these beasts from this place. We cannot allow any of the Frost Horde to claim a hold in Eridmethrin. Alright, let's go and deal with some worms. What's their twist today? Cree Mills Chosen. Oh, fun. Now, since the monster commander of this mission will attempt to summon blizzards, well, it can't be the boss for this mission because there is no boss in this mission. So I would presume then that whoever is there, probably the larger of the drakes, will be able to do that. Within the ruins of Stormwall, cold worms... Oh, they're worms, not even drakes there. Well then, probably some of the worms then have this remels chosen. Within the ruins of Stormwall, cold worms have begun nesting in the vacant lair of Etterfang. Your mission is to clear out the cold worm nesting grounds at the ruins of Stormwall. Well then, let's go and see what's there. We have arrived at Stormwall, and now let's go and deal with some nests of ice. Yes, we do see... Oh, they're signature cold worms. Yes, that explains why they'll have three meals chosen. It's the signatures that always seem to have it. Yeah, we, we are not going to let them bring out a blizzard. Of course, they have other ways of making my visit here a bit on the frosty side. Now, what I need to do here is to kill... Worms. So, kill worms aren't necessary in this mission, but we do have to destroy some of these nests. And it looks like these nests are in different spots every time you run this, because last time I ran it, there was a nest back there, but there doesn't seem to be today. The next nest seems to be over here. So that's a pretty common thing to happen in some of them, where you have different spots where things can be. So you'll need to go about, you can't just memorize where they are and find an optimal route. You might be able to find an optimal route that covers all the potential spots, I guess. But I don't know what that route is. I'm sure someone out there is trying to do that. Right now, though, I am trying to deal with this vicious cold worm. And that is... Two nests down and many worms down and, well, it appears that we don't have a nest around here, but there's no way for me to double check that without getting close enough to gain the ire of this vicious worm. Right now... How many bleeds do you need on you? Oh, this guy doesn't have too many bleeds on him. Okay, I'm not doing a very effective job of killing him, it sounds like. Now, what if we... You're right. Let me just double check to make sure there aren't any in this area. Ooh, there is one in this area, though. Apparently, they thought it was well hidden that no hobbits could come in and destroy their nest. Oh, here we go. Three in a row. Oh, hello! I, I see that you're trying to incubate your egg. Now, how do drakes incubate their eggs? That's an issue. Do cold drakes need to incubate their eggs, or are they... Or can they be... Ouch. Or can they survive in cooler climes? That's an interesting thought. They may need warmth to develop or something like that. Or maybe not. 
Now, one possibility is that the type of worm that you are isn't dependent on genetics or anything like that, but based on the incubation temperature of your eggs. And that is not completely far-fetched because there are, I think, some... I think it is crocodiles where gender is defined by the temperature of the eggs. So, it, yes, it is possible for some things to be dependent on temperature on how they develop. And it could be that there is no difference in species or anything like that between cold worms and rock worms and various other types of worms. And it could just be the temperature at which they develop. And that would explain how come all these different types of worms can be from Scotha's brood. It could be potentially true due to differences in incuba all right, incubation requirements, so to speak. There you go. Hello! I just hadn't thought about that, but it seems to be potentially fitting. Now, what's going to be really fitting is if I can actually get my sequence here proper so that I can do as much damage as quickly as possible to these worms. And yes, this one's going down. Just enough bleeds to make it fall down. All right, that's five of eight. Oh, there's another one up here. Delete key is your friend, as they sometimes tell me. At six. Unfortunately, there aren't any others nearby. Hmm. Now we have some more worms up in this direction. Well, there's something up here, and is there also a nest up here? Yes, there is. How about that? Now, in this case, obviously this worm is trying to protect the nest. That could explain a number of things. Because the other thing is that the worm I saw on top of it wasn't as much incubating the nest as trying to protect it, just in case some crazed hobbit came in and tried to destroy all, all of her eggs, right? I mean, who would think about doing a thing like that? No idea. Who would think about coming casually all along here and doing that? Now, I think we need one more. Nest. And, oh, it's right over here. Apparently, nobody's around to... to stop us. So now I just have to remember where is it now. I will presume it's going to be to the south. But the end. Yes, I could see the quest ring now. So we have made it to the entrance here. I figured south would be the right direction to go. In that case. Hello there. What did I do there? Currency cat. Oh, of course. Great work, Pine Leaf. With the nest destroyed, let's return and report your success to Horrid. Yes, let us report our success. We have returned. Well done. With many of the nests destroyed and cold worms defeated, we should be able to regain our hold on Stormwall soon enough. You've done well. All right, I have done well. And I've also hit Currency Cap. Oh, well. Maybe I'll find something to buy with all those extra marks. But I also have another mission here. Son of the Chieftain. Shatter Munzu, the abandoned fort in Duskenvale, has been quiet since the departure of the Warg Chieftain. But the Scouts have reported seeing Wargs hunting in the forest nearby. Some of the prints they have seen sound to suggest a large pack leader may be inside. Perhaps a son of Ronular himself. We cannot allow the Wargs to regain a foothold on the south. So let us go. But what's the twist to this one? Inspiring presence. Well, apparently the son of Ronular is... 
really an inspiring warg? Yes, the orcs and wargs have returned to Shathur Munzu, attempting to set up a new base south of the warfront. Your mission is to find and defeat Mohut and a fearsome warg pack leader. Then let's go. Now, unfortunately, the last time I was in this area, we had things that constantly respawned. Now, we do have the usual two works there, though, except instead of a defiler at the start, we do have this work. That is one difference here. I just hope that another difference is that they don't all go around respawn. Actually, it doesn't really matter all that much if they respawn because you don't have to do backtracking in this one in order to get to the... To the, to the dwarf at the end? Yeah, that's it. The dwarf at the end. To the chest and the dwarf at the end. They spawn near the chief, fortunately. Now, there are... Oh, yeah, I forgot about... There are a couple of defilers in here, such as the one up ahead there. It seems to be in the same place as one of the defilers in the other mission. So, I don't know if they have things respawning around here or not, but... When I do this one, I usually don't stay around long enough in order to find out. Instead, I just head for the chieftain. Now, if you need to kill extra wargs... Actually, technically I do need to kill extra wargs. I'm only at 162 of 200. Well, 163 now. So I can kill extra wargs if I like and farm every single one I want here because this one won't end until I kill the chie chieftain's son. So due to that, you can't get some extra, especially if those wargs do respawn. Actually, now I'm a little bit curious. Now, I don't see any red dots here, so I don't think they do. I think this is a one-shot one. So you could, if you want to, try to kill every single warg in this area for the extra wargs. But I have a feeling that I'm not going to have any trouble finishing the deed. Perhaps if we're talking about a rarer mob. But when I am at... Well, okay. Oh yes, this that little alcove there. I completely forgot. Yeah, let let that's you join the party too. All right, now we'll give you a a corruption removal, and you can get a corruption removal, and we won't have any corrupt wargs anywhere around here. Not that now. I'm not going to try to see if I could find a way through there. I think I'll just head on out, try to kill the chief, worry about this crazy defiler because you always know that you always have to worry about defilers. Especially when they ruin my armor like this. There you go. Now, where are we here? Because there he is. Mokuk. Son of Runular. Alright, now. Oh! And we got one of these. 166. So I have about 170. So I have only 30 left after this is over with. Probably slightly less than that. As I said, I don't expect to have any trouble whatsoever finishing up my war deed. Oh. All right, he he's still asleep. I guess I could cope with that. And I could what? Oh, <laughs> for a moment I thought, oh, did he? What? Did I wake him up? <laughs> but apparently, he was just howling in his sleep. Don't ask me why. 
Maybe he thought that there was a hobbit sneaking up on him. All right, I have... Actually, it looks like that... Barring there being another warg in the area, that... Yeah, there is another warg in the area. I had a feeling of that. Now, this guy has an inspiring presence, so... We will... D with him first. There you go. And we can Ooh. We we can get stunned, that's what we can do. We could add more bleeds to him so that he will continuously bleed. Oh, it, oh wait, he that that finally got his attention. Oh. Hey, what in the world was that? Well, are you gonna lag out with me? Don't lag out with me on the end. It's, it's not, it's not nice to lag out on the end. All right, there you go. Fine. Done with. Oh, it's like I, that's gonna do anything for me right now. Good work. Let's return the reporter success to Horan. Yeah, let's go. One work chieftain dead. Well done. Though the great prize at Gundabad stands in front of us, we must remember to always protect our rear. Yes, you seem to like saying that, don't you? All right. Well, that is it for our first pair of missions for set number eight, where we've dealt with a new chieftain of the wargs, and we also dealt with some wormness. So next time, I think we are going to be... Going into some ruins and fighting some goblins. What else is new when we return for the next episode of Missions 101?